Hey everybody, Dr. David Perlmutter here. Got an interesting uh, study I'm going to present to you today, and I'm going to do it in the context of some events that have occurred for me uh, in the past couple of weeks. We've been filming experts from around the country in Alzheimer's disease uh, for an upcoming documentary that we're going to be making available to everybody. And one of the interesting themes that uh, made itself really very evident while we were filming these experts is the notion that it's not reasonable to wait uh, for people to suddenly become cognitively impaired to start doing something. And in fact, uh, I've presented information to everyone before uh, with respect to various studies that have demonstrated that inflammation early on in life uh, is the harbinger to uh, troubles with the brain decades later. So we now recognize that this process of inflammation that can be occurring in our 20s, 30s, and 40s may well set the stage for Alzheimer's when we are older, uh, a disease for which there is no treatment. I have presented uh, in blog form uh, interesting data in the past that correlates levels of inflammation with memory dysfunction uh, later on, 20 to 30 years later, as well as shrinkage of the brain. And now there's a very a new interesting study that we're going to look at in just a moment that relates uh, earlier life inflammation to actually risk of cognitive decline. Let's have a look. The study is called Systemic Inflammation During Midlife and Cognitive Change Over 20 Years. And this was recently published in the journal Neurology. Now, the study looked at over 12,000 participants whose average age was uh, 57. And again, uh, it looks like about half of them are women. Uh, and at their first visit, <clears throat> and again, this was uh, many years ago, they were uh, given a, a blood test that determined their inflammation composite score. A number of factors were looked at, including fibrinogen, white blood cell count, von Willebrand factor, and factor eight. And on their second visit, uh, perhaps an inflammation marker that you might be more familiar with called C-reactive protein. Then these individuals underwent an assessment of their cognitive function three times over the ensuing 20 years. This looked at things like memory, executive function, and language. And then they ranked these individuals with respect to where they landed on the inflammation composite scale the lowest quartile versus the highest quartile, and uh, plotted that against cognitive decline. And what they found was really quite interesting, that those 20 years before who had the highest level of inflammation had the greatest degree of cognitive decline. So again, this sets the stage for our understanding that uh, you know we can't really wait until suddenly we're beginning to fail cognitively this shows us that issues, in this case 20 years prior, are associated with cognitive decline. When looking at the C-reactive protein, again, that's a marker uh, that many of you may be familiar with. It's certainly a blood test you can get even today at your doctor's office, uh, that this relationship was even more profound. That having an elevated C-reactive protein 20 years prior is associated with a pretty darn significant increased risk for cognitive decline. The authors stated that the current study provides support for an association between midlife systemic inflammation and subsequent cognitive decline, and in, so, in doing so, provides additional evidence for an early pathogenic role of systemic inflammation in late life neurocognitive impairment. So this is really very important information, isn't it? It's telling us that, again, we can't wait until you, uh, a person suddenly becomes cognitively impaired, begins to have difficulties with memory and executive function and, and things like that, to begin to act. That really, the stage is already beginning to be set uh, earlier in life. And as this study would report, you know, this is 20 to 30 years prior to, well, this study, 20 years, uh, prior to the onset of what we call clinical manifestations. Those are the observed cognitive issues. But the question then becomes, when should we be really paying attention to those important lifestyle choices that have a bearing on future brain function? And I would submit it's not in our 20s and 30s. 
It isn't in our teens. It's actually not even in our adolescence or childhood, but may very well uh, be occurring during prenatal times uh, when mother's dietary choices, for example, usage of uh, things like antibiotics and even method of delivery may have a bearing on the future health of that child and uh, future adult. So this is interesting information. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.